Dalton Fanatic. I am your host, Dave Dalton, and I'm excited to share my passion and perspective of our Detroit Pistons as we go on this fantastic voyage together. I've been a diehard Piston fan since the days of Dave Bing and Bob Lanier. I've also been the varsity basketball coach of a very successful program in northern Michigan. Well, Piston fans, thank you for listening. Please subscribe and like. And tonight we're going to talk about um, an interview done by Woj, and it's with Cade and Troy Weaver. And so... Um, before we do that, I'm just going to talk briefly. The Warriors last night played the Nuggets, and they were up by 14 going into the fourth quarter. And right at the end of the fourth quarter, Jokic gets the ball, at, dribbles it over half court, and he's way over to the sideline, and he banks it in. And so the Nuggets win the game at the buzzer, and that's we, got, we get to play the Warriors tonight. And so I'm going to be doing a podcast after the Warriors game tonight. And so look for that, but I'd like... I just want to talk about this interview because I think it had a lot, a lot of interesting things. And uh, first of all, Adrian Wojnarowski is really connected to the NBA. He is ESPN's number one guy for breaking news and reporting things. And he, uh, I thought it was cool that at the beginning of this, he talked about how the Detroit Piston fans are among the most knowledgeable and passionate fans in the NBA. And Cade also acknowledged that. And so that was really cool. And, you know, they, you know, everybody talks about the Knicks fans and how in Madison Square Garden they, they cheer the opponents if they do good and whatever. But I just am, think it's cool that, that Adrian Wojnarowski acknowledged our, our fans. So Cade said he's grateful to be where he is. And, you know, going through this streak and, it, you know, he wouldn't be interviewed if it wasn't for the streak that Woj wanted to, you know, find out his perspective of how it was to go through this. And he said that, um, He's grateful for where he is and going through this. He wouldn't want to be anywhere else besides in Detroit. He said they give us energy every night. And he said there are a lot of places that he's played where um, the other team might be even pretty good. And they don't give the team the juice that they give our team, that he, they give his team. And so he, he loves that about uh, Detroit. And we know that he, from the very beginning, from the day that he got drafted by the Pistons, he has been all in on Detroit and he has been all passionate and you know, he's, he's the kind of leader. He wanted to be here and it's, it's really cool. So he said, it's definitely been tough to know how our, how bad our city, and I, and I say our state wants us to win and wants, and doesn't want to be where we're at right now. And he said, it sparks a fire inside him to want to be on the other side of this. And so that we can, he can win for the city. And couple of things that lets me know. First of all, I wanted to mention, I hadn't mentioned this before, I don't think, you know, I, about a month into the season, the Pistons were, Cade was struggling. I mean, he had some decent numbers, but his efficiency and turnovers were up and he wasn't playing up to the level and close. What, to what, I mean, the last month he's really elevated it, but he, he deserves that rookie max extension. It's a lot of money, but, you know, I, I was worried when he was just, you know, in the, like I said, after the first month that, he wasn't necessarily deserving. I, I, I'd be a little bit worried about giving it to him, but I have no doubts now. I've always known that he's the leader and he's the type of person that you want leading your team. And this came across very clearly in this interview and how much he cares and how much he puts on his shoulders and how much he wants this for his team and how much he loves his teammates and how he leads them every day. And anyway, he says it means a lot to my game and the whole team's game to know that we're representing more than just ourselves. We are representing the whole city and again, the state and that, that really cares about the game and knows the game. He said, if we're playing bad and we're down by 20 and we dive on the, the um, floor for a loose ball, they're going to cheer for us. He said, if we do bad and we're just playing bad, they're going to boo us. And he said, and we, we, we agree with that. You know, we don't think it's wrong for them to boo us when we're playing bad. And he knows what's, um, I know that that's true with my listeners. You guys are knowledgeable. You guys, I mean, I get to see it in your comments. And also I get to see your passion and the fact that you follow this team that loses, you know, speaks to everything that Woj and Cade have talked about, uh, how much you care and that you're not just going to give up when when the team is struggling and not doing bad. A lot of places, he, you know, Cade's seen it around the league, even teams that are doing okay, but they don't, they give up on their team and they don't they're not as passionate about their team so he said that you know he wouldn't want to be anywhere else going through this and that's another thing that's you know people some of my listeners i know are concerned that Cade, you know that we're so bad and everything's being so poorly run that he's going to want to jump ship well i i don't see that happening maybe 
maybe five years from now or seven years from now if, if things don't get better. But I think he his his passion is to turn this around for Detroit and get this team going in the right direction. And he thinks he thinks that he can, and he's told uh, Woj that he thinks that they can. That we have some really talented young players. Another thing that came across in the interview, interview though, is as much as a lot of us struggle with Monty, um, Cade and Monty have a, a strong relationship, and they they talk. And he said this this uh, losing streak that they've gone through has brought them closer together. They're always in communication, and he thinks that you know Monty really cares about the players, and he trusts them, and he talks to them like he cares, and he you know he's all in on Monty, so. You know, I, I still get a kick. I know Monty talked the other day about after the Jazz game about Ivy. He said he didn't he didn't get a lot of burn tonight because Burks was going. But I think that Ji is figuring out how to play off Cade and JD. He said Cade is, J, Ivy is knocking down the three and it's helping hit the rest of his game. Well, you know what, Monty, that doesn't quite cut it because in the first half, Burks didn't have it going, and you still only played him. The last five minutes of the second quarter so I don't I don't buy into it again I still think it's you know I don't know if the players are ever going to get to a point where it's not just what Monty says it's his actions so he can talk and say the right things but he, what he actually does is sometimes a different thing and I see the Shams reported the Lakers there you know it's not you know we aren't, we're not the only team that has a coach that doesn't always do things that that seem to be make sense but sham says that there's currently going a lot of disconnect with the lakers will, or between darvin ham and the and the team in the locker room stemming from the disjointness around the rotations and adjustments and that's how we feel i think a lot of you feel about that you know that monty is clueless about his you know he's had all this time to figure things out and he still he still doesn't. But anyway, let's go back to the interview. And you know, like I said, Cade and Monty have a great relationship. And one thing that bothers me about that though is that Monty, I think, had probably a great relationship with um, Devin Booker. You know, and he kind of knows who who's the guy that's the top of the team. You know, in the pecking order. And he makes sure he's on his side, but you know, there's other guys like Jaden Ivey and like, you know, players that were for the Phoenix Suns, you know, DeAndre Ayton, you know, and he didn't have a good relationship with him and it didn't seem appear that he tried to, that he just picks who he likes and then doesn't. And so that remains to be seen, I guess, as long as Cade likes him. And another big thing that came across in the Troy Weaver interview that was interesting for me is that Troy said that him and Monty are in, always in discussion. And I, I, you know, there was that report from Jake Fisher from Yahoo sports that said that there's, you know, this, you know, discourse between um, Monty and Troy over the handling of Jaden Ivey, that there's some contention there. And so, but it sounds like Troy and Monty are meeting all the time and that they're trying to, you know, not leave any stone unturned. And Cade kind of said the same thing that him and he, you know, him and Monty are every day they're talking and they're trying to figure out a way to get this turned around and get the team playing better. So a couple of things I wanted to say uh, more about um, Cade and compare it to, you know, my second favorite team in the league is the Oklahoma City Thunder. I just admire the way they've been run. I really love their coach. I would give anything to have Mark Dengno be our coach. But um, Shay, look at Shay Gilders Alexander, and I think I don't. I'm not sure that Cade will ever be the player he is. I I think he's, you know, one of the top four or five players in the NBA, and he could be MVP as far as I'm concerned. He is just unbelievable. I watched him play the Celtics, and they beat the Celtics, who's the best team in basketball, has the best record, and they beat them by three points. And he was just magnificent. The whole Thunder team played magnificently. But anyway, so Shay, 22 years old. And that was in the year, the season, the 2020-2021 season. They only they only won 22 games, which was more than what, like we won last year. But 22 and 50. And when he was 23 years old, they were in 2021-2022. Um, they were uh, let's see where is it. 21 and 22. So that must have been a shortened season. So no, no, I'm sorry, sorry, I. In the 2021-2022 season, they were 24 and 58. 
So they weren't good that year. And his age 24 season was last year, and they were 40 and 42. So you see that Shea, who is arguably one of the top three or four players in the whole NBA, and they weren't great when he was there. And they had a lot of young players on that team too, and they still have a lot of young players on their team, but they've gotten better. And so now, so now age 24 was last year, they were 40 and 42. So they took that jump then. And and this year he's 25 and they're 23 and 10 and they're got the second best record in the West. And so, you know, he improved and their teams improved. And, you know, it's interesting to see he took another big jump. Shea did, you know, he had, when he was 23 years old, he averaged 24 points a game. And Cade's still only 22 and he's averaging about 24 a game. And in year 24, his age 24 season, he jumped to 31 points per game. And I don't think Cade will do that. I don't. I, I think that Cade is not going to be the person that scores 30 a game. I, I mean, we, we've seen him score over 40 a couple games. We've scored him, seen him score a bunch over 30 recently. But I still think his sweet spot, and if we're going to be good, it would be more like if we want, he scored like 25 a game and had seven assists and five rebounds. I think that's, you know, what we need him to, you know, turn it over only three and a half times a game. But anyway... He's a great player, and uh, another interesting thing that um, happened, Cade, you know, people were debating the 2021 draft class, and Cade was taken first, and Troy talked about that, that he said, we looked at all these talented players, and it was a great class, and it was. It is a great class. Jalen Green's a great player. Uh, Evan Mobley's a great player. Scotty Barnes is a great player. They're all great players. Franz Wagner is, is amazing. I, I wish we could draft one of those guys this next year. But anyway, he, um, in that class, this season, uh, Cade is first in points per game, 23 and a half, first in assists per game, 7.3, first in total points, total assists, free throws made, free throw percentage, 88%. He's first, and he's second in three-pointers made. So he is putting up the numbers. He's playing great, and you know, he's proven that he deserved to be the first player in that draft. And, and again, I still say that his leadership is even far superior to anybody in that draft class. And one of the best leaders in all of the NBA. And again, every day he proves it. And he's, again, every time you hear him talk and including in this interview. So I would really recommend that you listen. It's the Woj podcast. And like I said, he hasn't put on one since uh, December 4th. He hasn't put out one. And then he's put just put one out today. And it's so you can find it on all the, you know, Spotify and whatever. So uh, Troy talked about his relationship with Monty and how him and Monty are working every day. And, and that they're talking every day and they're not leaving any stones unturned. And so I, that was interesting to me because, like I said, I, I just wasn't sure about how their relationship was going and stuff. So um, anyway, I'm going to be on tonight. It's going to be really late. And they're playing the Warriors. And hopefully you know, the Warriors are, you know, worn out mentally and physically from losing that game. And that they they don't come out. They've been very inconsistent this year. And so they still have some great players, especially Steph Curry. I, I'm almost sure thinking that now I, you know, Steph has always been one of my best non-Piston players, favorite players in the league, but I think that Shea's right there with him now. So anyway, be the reason that someone care, is cared for and feels considered and loved. And also please like and subscribe. Tell another Piston fan about this podcast, if you would, that might be interested. And go Pistons, let's beat the Warriors tonight.